We arrange the world according to our mind. All the floors are flat that we will not have to pay attention to how we walk. The things in the supermarket are arranged that we will not have to pay attention of how to pick them up. We know everything where it is. We wake up in the morning, we know where the light is, where the toilet is, where the shower is, where the soap is. So nothing is extraordinary. Nothing breaks the routine. Nothing allows the freedom of surprise, the freedom of discovery. And therefore, everything shrinks. In the world of today, everything shrinks. Not just our gadgets, but also the spaces we live in and work in. We also shrink, and we take less and less space all the time, even within ourselves. We get stuck in our mind and losing the rest of our body. When we have a very narrow range of movement, we also narrow the way we think and the way we perceive reality. Everything moves. The universe is movement, mostly. And once we stop moving and we become rigid, stiff and repetitive in a world of movement, we live in a constant conflict with our surroundings. I went to work and sat in my chair in my office. I will sit in the same way. I will use the computer in the same way, using the same fingers from the same thing, in the same speed, with the same effort which means that every moment will be almost exactly the same replica of the movement before, as if I'm a machine. And the body is not a machine. It's built to move in variety of ways, in freedom. And once it's designed like a machine, it starts to have the same problems machines have, in which joints get problematic, in which things start to crack, in which things start to rattle. And for us, it means pains and aches and problems. Freeing your movement aims to give you back what we lost long ago, and this is our body and the attention it can give to reality. Allowing my movement to be free expands the space around me, makes me think three-dimensionally and not in a chronological order necessarily, and allows me to perceive life in a much deeper and wider way. We are going to stop with the rope between you the rope has to be tight all the time, which means that you use your weight to hold the rope and the tightness, not just pulling and then blocking your joints, because through having a rope between you, you actually move much more your joints, and it's again, it's challenging you to move freely while you're dependent on another person. You're going to move medium speed, medium size in space. While teaching stopping movement, we practice many forms of limitations about the size of the movement, about the speed of the movement, about the lightness, the strength of the movement. And all of those limitations allow us to gain control at one thing at a time. By learning to do new movements, by sending our muscles, our tendons, our joints into new positions, we are expanding those possibilities. And by that, we are achieving energies that otherwise we would never get to tap and abilities that otherwise we never get to experience. The sun shines bright As it moves across my face I feel the light And everything is in it. The more you are attentive, and this is what freeing your movement aims to achieve, the more you are aware of relationship with other people. Your attention moves from a place of routines to a place of awareness to your surroundings. You manage to notice the people next to you, become aware of their moods, even from feeling how their bodies move. You can relate to that, and actually you allow much more contact because you are not fixated in your old routines. I've noticed since doing this training that I'm very different with people. 
I have more energy, I'm more natural, I'm much more relaxed. You feel more confident, more aware, more present. Just the fact that I have bigger range of movement, it expands everything. It expands your capacity of thinking, of bringing more opportunities into your life. So absolutely, this training is affecting all areas of my life. I was always looking for something to work for the body, like I did lots of meditation where you don't move at all, and then I did martial arts where you move a lot, but, but you move in certain ways. And then I came to this movement class and tried it, and I was so shocked that, that people move exactly in ways that are completely unknown and that are new and that, 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 that you break all these patterns and it, oh, it was so pleasurable to, to, to do this. Freeing my movement definitely aims on freeing the being of me that expresses itself mostly through movement because even talking is movement. We easily move our limbs, our hands and our legs. Try to move your body, your back and your pelvis and explore while you're doing it. Emphasize really on the stopping of each movement and that you use the whole space for yourself. I want you to pay attention to stop the movement every bit and to allow a new movement. Once I'm learning to stop in movement and the range of my movement increases, it doesn't feel so well to be inside a routine. It feels much better that there is a change and there is a movement. There's this constant perception that's growing. It's like a, it's like a sensation of, I can uh, train my attention. To enjoy life much more, that I don't take life so seriously and heavy, and this is very new. The biggest effect is really the stopping, and, and the precision that I have the control to stop something to move into a situation that I enjoy or get out of a situation that I don't enjoy. The good thing is that it's not learning intellectually, but you can really feel connected to how you move, what you allow yourself to move, how, which qualities you allow. You can perceive actually the freedom that you want. So absolutely, this training is affecting all areas of my life.